Hello everyone, I'm Chris Ward and this is the CBT Micro Nuggets on Quick Excel Tips. As your Microsoft Office guru for CBT Nuggets, I wanted to give you one or two quick Excel tips to help you become that much better with what I believe is the most powerful feature set of Microsoft Office and that of course is with the program Microsoft Excel. For the most part, whenever I'm talking to people about the fact that, hey, you know, I teach people how to use Excel or, or any of the Office products, a lot of people always come back to Excel and they say, how do you make it simpler? How do you make it quicker? That's usually what they're asking me is, you know, for some sort of tip or trick. One of the ones that really helped me out in the beginning was I would always get confused on to what my references were. Now, think about it. Excel references, you know, data as a cell reference, right? So this would be J7. And you notice up here it says J7. If you click down here, this is I9. It's the intersection of column I with row 9. And that's how they reference things. But if you have super large uh, Excel spreadsheets and you're trying to find things, that can be rather painful. I mean, how, how do I know that the uh, first quarter sales is going to be uh, for east, for the east region is D7. I can't remember things like that, but aha, I'm a, a human being and I can remember names a lot better. And so by using names, you can make your formulas easier to understand and maintain. You can define names for cell ranges, functions, constants, even tables. That's kind of cool. So you can refer to a table, like I want to use this table in this formula. But let me just show you the simple aspect of it, which is just to name a particular cell. Notice if I select on any one of these things up here, there something appears. This is the name box. The name box is where you can use the, obviously you can either go to a particular named uh, region or a name cell, but just by simply selecting this, coming up here, I can create a name for that particular cell. Now, a couple of rules. You have to start off with either a character, like a letter, and or you have to use an underscore or you have to use a backspace or a backslash. Those are the only three that can start a name. And by the way, you can't go like, well, E4, I just want to rename uh, D7 to E4. Can't do it. It will bark at you and say, no, sorry, that's an actual cell reference and I'm not going to change that. So in this case, though, we'll go ahead and do East First Quarter Sales. Okay, I go ahead and hit enter, boom, there you go. You notice it says East first quarter sales. That's kind of cool. And so if I deselect off it and I come back over here, notice what the name is, East first quarter sales. Well, why that's important. Let's say I'm all the way over here, uh, 100, uh, 100 columns away and 1,000 rows down and I want to go to East first quarter sales. I can come up here, select on the down arrow and it will give you a lot of your first thing and I can select on it, boom, takes you over there. Or you can come over here to the find and select, click on go to and check this out, there it is, East first quarter sales or you can start typing it in and it will appear for you. I click on OK and boom, it takes you over there. What makes it even cooler is, let me show you this, let me do uh, this one would be East second, oh and by the way, get my thing in here. Um, the the uh, thing is not case sensitive, even though I'm t capitalizing East and, and Q for thing, uh, quarter, it's not case sensitive. So this basically, it looks like it is a non-case sensitive. So if you think, oh, I can do sales all uppercase and then sales all lowercase and I can have two different names, that is incorrect. It will say, no, I'm sorry, that is invalid. Choose a unique name. So let's say just for fun, I'm over here on K7 and I want to add the first quarter sales and the second quarter sales. So what would I use? Yeah, I mean, I would use the sum formula, right? So I come over here, I click up here and we'll do it the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> equals sum. Now check this out. Now I have to put in parentheses a, um, a character, right? And so if I start typing east, look what it does it allows me to utilize the named region. So if you know the name, I know East first quarter sales, East second quarter sales, I double click, it enters that, of course put the colon in, and then I put East, double click, and finish the formula off. Boom, I'm done. And check it out, it did the formula, it did it exactly. And look at my formula, look at this formula. East first quarter sales, 
East second quarter sales. And it refers to, obviously, these two cell references, but I've used a name to find this out. That's your first tip. Second tip is how do we copy formulas so I don't have to keep typing in all of this all over the place? Now, of course, like I said, I can type things over and over and over again, but that's tedious and it is error prone. You can possibly, you know, accidentally type something, especially if you have a formula that runs out to, you know, you know, all the way over here and you're like, okay, I got to do this and this and this and change the cell reference. Instead, what you can do is simply copy the actual formula itself. So in this case, I select this. Now I can do this one of two ways. I can come over here and I can click on the copy, which is fine. Or notice they give you the keyboard shortcut of control C. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this. I copy it. Notice it rings it with my dotted ant line as it goes through. And I come down here and then I simply paste. Once I do it, it's going to notice this is a formula that takes and adds up all of these um, cell references across the row. That's what the formula does. When I copy down here, it will automatically go over and say, ah, I'm going to add up the, uh, the row here, 6101, 4252, 5029, 5571. When I do that and I simply click paste, you'll notice it's 295511. It's not the same. And if I select on this, this is D7 through G7. When I select on this, it is what? D12 through G12. It automatically does that. And now unless you put an absolute reference, which of course is uh, something you know, you put the dollar sign in front of the uh, the number so that way you know that this is an absolute reference, um, you can you can copy ahead. So watch this. I haven't done anything else, right? I haven't, I've not clicked on anything else. I go ahead and click paste again. Boom. And there you go. It now has added up those. And it also can do be down here. Let's finish this up and that way I can get my 2010 totals here. I go ahead and paste. Boom. And this automatically updates as it rolls on. Now to get rid of this, just another tip, hit the escape key and the selection process goes away. So there's the first two tips in my Excel tips course on micro nuggets. And hey, stay tuned. We're going to give you a few more every once in a while to help you become better at any of the office products that you can learn about here at CBT Nuggets. I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for joining me.